welcome to the channel. This is WIP Reviews, which stands a work in progress. We are two works in progress. I'm Sam. And I'm Dennis. And we're two best friends who love reacting to music, film, entertainment, anything pop culture. And today, we are reacting to... Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo, Rodrigo Guts. Guts. That's right. It's her sophomore album. We're very excited. We've already reacted to Vampire, Bad Idea Right, and her documentary Driving Home to You. So please go check out all those videos. We're really interested in seeing what this album will bring us, so... Let's get right into Let's it. Let's just get started, yeah. Let's do it. Track number one, All American. I am built like a mother and a total machine. I was not expecting that at all. It sounds like a Lizzie McAlpine song. Um, this video just reminds me of how young she is. She just looks so little. Yeah, it's Avril. It's it's like early Fallout Boy-ish. Mm. I don't know, it's good. I like this song. I know my age and I act like it. That was a good song. It's sampled, right? Okay. It's cool. It just sounds like a sample. That's all. Uh, yes, but taking aside that, yeah. it's a cool song. It's very throwback, two thousands pop punk. The lyrics were fun, and mm -hmm. obviously the song is not like traditionally written. Like the the, the verses were different. The choruses were different from the first to second, and the second verse was really short, and then it went to something else. So it's cool that it's written mm -hmm. in a unique way, mm -hmm. and shows her voice in many different ways. Track number two, bad idea, right? We already reacted to that, so go check that out. Track number three is Vampire. We also reacted to that, so go check it out. Track number four, Lacey. Ooh, I care, I care, I care, like perfume that you wear. It's pretty. Taylor Swifty. Mm -hmm. Taylor Swift's song, uh, Snow on the Beach, you know, Lana Del Rey. -esque. I was thinking Lana Del Rey. <laughs> yeah. It's every time there's that, like, ambient, dreamy feeling, it's Lana Del Rey. Ish. The lyrics are okay. I don't think they're out of this world, but they're they're okay. I think this song is fine as a as a track on an album. I wouldn't put this as a single, but I wouldn't necessarily skip it. I'd just be like, oh, okay. You poison every little thing that I do. I really like the musical bridge. Big fan of a musical bridge. But also, you know, it's also giving a little Fleetwood Mac and I feel like this song, you know, in the beginning I didn't really like it, but as I got towards the end I liked it more. I feel like this is going to be one of those songs that like die hard Olivia fans are going to be like, oh, this is a hidden gem song. I also thought it got better and I also think people are going to really like it. I also, at the end, like, I really liked her vocal production. They didn't clean it up. They didn't, in the sense that like you can hear her breaths. You can almost hear the spit because she's so close to the mic whispering. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really nice to hear that because a lot of the time, sometimes when people are like whispering, they still clean it up. She's talking about how she wishes she was someone else. Maybe. Tell us what you think the song's yeah, about. Yeah, what is the song about? We don't know. Track number five, Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. And I hate all my clothes. Feels like my skin doesn't fit right over my bones. The song's fun. I like it. Yeah, super good. So far, none of the songs I'm hearing are like, all the way through great lyrics it's almost like there are certain lines that i pick out that i'm like ooh, that's mm -hmm. interesting like it's not that i'm impressed overall with the lyrics i'm impressed with certain lyrics i hear the one about it's like my skin doesn't fit over my bones mm -hmm. that's like a nice like i really like that lyric and i liked the chorus i like the eyes how it repeated over and over and i just like how her voice sounds on it and she's also really really good at expressing snarkiness over <laughs> lyrics like she's very good at it you can hear her sarcasm, and sometimes it's, it's kind of hard to tell what people are doing, but she's really good at expressing emotion through her songs. Yeah, her acting really comes out in music, which is a really, which is a tough skill. A lot of people just sing songs, but no, this one, she's, she's putting her soul into it. I also noticed in the first four track, it says gut, and now it says guts. Mm. I don't know. Leaving hints? Easter eggs. <laughs> I think it's the best one so far. Mm -hmm. I meant not vampire. Vampire is more classic pop. It's very radio friendly. This, I'm curious to see if she would release this as a single in the sense that maybe Olivia is big enough to make this kind of song be a hit. I think it would be a hit, but I also know that this isn't the style for most people. But maybe Olivia's star power is strong enough to make it a hit. I also like the title. I think it's really funny that it's called Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. And I also think just the song, the entire song is super relatable. Everything she's saying. I like the lyrically, I think the song is the best. I think it's clever. 
the, like, I can't think of a third line and the rest is la 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 la. I think she vocally sounds really good in this song. The attitude is good, everything. Like, I think this is a, a very good song. It's not like my favorite song she's ever released, but I think this is a very strong, like, pop punk uh, record. This is exactly where Olivia shines. Yeah. It's the clever lyrics. It's using her voice in different ways. That chorus is amazing, actually. Also, the way that... Because I think a chorus should be sung so that people can remember it, but also doing little things to make it different. Because if you're singing social suicide over and over and over again, it can get boring, but she's doing things that are interesting. Like, she's doing these beautiful choruses. Social suicide. Oh, so good. Very 2000s as yeah. well. I just, I love those chords. It just, it speaks to me. It's like, ooh. Track number six. Making the bed. We don't know about these Easter eggs. Zero, eight, five, seven. But also she's, I guess, teasing her world tour. Palm Springs, California. Is it going to start in Palm Springs, California? We're very observant. We are. We're so well versed in Easter egg culture. I'm playing the victim so well in my head. But it's me who's been making the bed. You know what I like about the album so far is there's only two songs about boys so far. A lot of them have been like self-reflecting songs, which I like that. It's a big departure from the first album. Yeah, it was all about heartbreak, but even the two songs that are about like other people and relationships, they're not like so sad. They're more reflective. And, it, and even these songs are all a period of reflection, which I like. This is like the, right, the second slow song after Lacey. And I think this one's a lot better than Lacey. I think it's, the lyrics are better. The chorus is a strong chorus. I like the idea. Like you said, I like how reflective it is and talking about kind of taking responsibility for, for all the actions. On current train, driving through the city, the brakes go out on me. <laughs> I have this dream too, guys. <laughs> it's a true nightmare. I don't know if she's like joking that that's a dream, but I have that dream all the time. <laughs> like I can't stop the car and I just have to keep driving and swerving and then I get into an accident. It's horrifying. You're not the beautiful things I regret. I liked it. I liked how it switched from the guitar to just the piano. I think her voice sounded really pretty. I liked the lyric, counting all the beautiful things I regret. I just think overall her voice sounds really nice on this. The falsetto doesn't seem too falsetto-y where it's just like straight up air. It sounds like a good, strong one. Yeah, I think this is going to be another one of the favorites. Of the Olivia stands like one step forward and three steps back. Mm. This is like the same equivalent, I think. Number seven, logical. And I fell for you like water falls from the February sky. I like the um the line as water pours from the February sky. So visual. I love that stuff. Yes. Again, like I love when music tells a story. She's very good at that sometimes. But I think even in this song, she's doing a pretty good job of painting that picture. Also, there all are a lot of songs about relationships because you're forgetting Vampire and Bad Idea, right? No. But they're reflective. Yeah, they're so it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's, it's not like she's saying they're all like this one. She's kind of Bad Idea, right? A vampire and Logical are kind of really like talking about this person being like a bad person, like you know, master manipulator. Yeah, but I don't think she's upset in this song. Yeah, she's that's true. again reflecting. Yeah, she is. Yeah. So I guess they're all reflective about relationships is a better way of saying it, which I think is good. I, I like to hear that because instead of like feeling sad in the moment, we could take a step back because a lot more people can relate to that as well. Right. So maybe Sour was more accusatory and Guts is doing what takes more Guts and that's being reflective. I know I'm half responsible and that makes me feel horrible. I think it was a little long. I feel like we could have cut at least one of those. I think I prefer more the second half than the first half of what she was saying. I think the lyrics were more, were a bit deeper. Also in the second half, she was saying like what he did, which was horrible. But she followed them up instantly with like reflections of like, okay, I was there and feeling that self-blame that many victims do when they're in a manipulation, manipulative relationship, blaming herself of why you were there. And also good to hear maybe for her younger fans that she was also in a situation like this, and but now she's looking back, which means hopefully she's not in it anymore. Track number eight, get him back. Two, five, eight, drive. Get him drive. Los, Los Angeles. Angeles. Okay guys, I wanna be a part of it. Guys, leave the Easter eggs in the comments for us. What, what is she telling us? 
I Tell us have, your theories. I want to be a part of the Easter egg community. So I miss him so nice when I'm feeling depressed. Till I remember every time he made a pass on my friend. Cool. Okay, so it's like bad idea, right? I, I like this one uh, because it does like kind of involve those t like conflicting feelings. Like, oh, you want him, but you shouldn't. But I still do because of all these memories. She's missing the memories and, and what has happened before while being so blindsided in love. So, I mean, yeah, I think she she puts her feelings to words really well and she does it really well in the song. I'm just surprised that there's a second song of this style. Like, I think one is a lot to put because it's, it's just so distinct. I think if I had already heard Bad Idea, right, for the first time, listening to this album and hear this, I'd, it'd be a little much. But I still like it. I think I actually like this one better than Bad Idea. I right? wanna kiss his face with an I think I do like this better than Bad Idea, right? I like this one better too. I think the lyrics are better and... This song also, like, I don't know if I can get through the whole thing just because it's like a little repetitive. I can listen to it more than I would be able to listen to Bad Idea. I thought the bridge was really cool. Much, I mean, obviously better than Bad Idea, right? And like, it was just fun. She's just, her writing has gotten better and better. I think she's writing more for her band as well. I mean, she's combining a lot of years and different genres of music, but she's writing for her band as well, and I, and I like that. I, I like a band style song as well, so that the band can really jam out. And you can tell like people in the background will just love to sing along to the song. So, Track number nine, Love is Embarrassing. I stayed in bed for like a week when you said space was what you need. All right, we were just jamming, we couldn't even stop. Yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah, this song could definitely fit into Sour. Like, I think the the material, the what she's saying really fits what she was talking about in Sour. I also think that the verses, her voice sounds like 80s rock feel, which I actually really enjoy. I think her voice sounds really nice. And I wish that carried through instead of going to this chorus, which sounds more like the other songs where it's mm. more 2000s punky. And I think it would have brought like a new element to the whole song if it's not just the verses having that effect. I think it still fits in this album. I mean, I really like the way that her her choruses this album have been so good. And the the love's fucking embarrassing. Her flipping into her head voice but still being like loud and a little bit raspy. She's really using her voice as an instrument which she did in the first one, but it was mostly like, I don't want to keep saying sad. It was more like draining feeling the whole album, but this is feeling like she's really learned how to use her voice as an instrument. And she, you could tell she put work in the album. I just think that it's, it's fun. I mean, it's not the best one on the album, but I, I think that it is, I mean, if you're listening from the beginning to this song, it might get a little bit repetitive feeling because there's not a lot, now there's not a lot of variety, but I'm not mad that it's on the album. I'm glad that it is. Track number 10, The Grudge. It takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. I like that line, it takes strength to forgive, but I don't feel strong. Sad, the song's okay though. In terms of the general sound, it sounds like driver's license. It's like the mm. piano, dun, 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 and the progression, dun, 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 dun. as it gets a little loud, it sounds a little like driver's license. I think the lyrics are, are interesting, and they're, they're uh, pretty. Again, I think it fits also in the last album. While maybe the first half of the album, I felt like were distinctly different, this and the last song feel like they could have been a part of Sour. But maybe this one feels a little bit older. Even after all this, you're still everything to me, you know. Yeah, it sounds a lot like a driver's license, <laughs> like a lot, a lot like it. Um, but I do think, I, I like the lyrics, uh, there were maybe four or five lyrics that I noticed, which is pretty good for a song. Overall, I liked how it ended, I liked the story of the song, I liked how, so I, I think I liked it lyrically. And I think like the title of it, the fact that it sounds so like rough and tough and it's like this soft ballad is also an interesting artistic choice. Track number 11, Pretty Isn't Pretty. Think looks wrong. I really like this one. I really like the lyrics. I like the beginning. I don't like how high she goes. I feel like she could have gone a little bit darker into her 
into more of her chest voice but i know i mean it's a stylistic choice but i just really like her her deeper tones i wish she went a different direction with the lyrics of the song i think when i read pretty isn't pretty i thought she was going to talk about how like her commenting on the like her saying like pretty like what we think is pretty isn't pretty like you know she's talking about like oh it's not really pretty like doing all this stuff but instead she's talking about not being pretty enough i don't love that as much as saying like oh this isn't pretty, what's the point of doing it? Like, I think that's more interesting than saying that she's not pretty enough. You know, I know she's saying that like, oh, like no matter what I do, I'm not pretty enough. That's more of a cliche that you're not pretty enough. But like, I feel like it would have been a, a better message to say that it isn't even pretty at all. A fade? Okay, bringing it way back. Loving the fade out. When listening to this song, I think this is the sound that I would want her to have. Like, I hope that this album makes her feel even more inspired to make music that sounds like this because this really does sound like her style. Sour is, again, like I said, the girl in her room with the ukulele. That's me. I get it. But, you know, that's like Dodie era. This is Olivia Rodrigo. Yeah, I like the, the instrumental of the entire song. I thought it was really cool. Track number 12. The final track, Teenage Dream, and not Katy Perry's. You make me feel like I'm living the teenage dream the way you told me on. And I'm sorry that I couldn't always be your teenage dream. Lyrics in this song, probably the best. The best ones. So oh, good. yeah. And I like that it's raw. It's just like her and the piano. I, re I really like that. I'm sure maybe it'll start to pick up, but yeah. Teenage Dream, you think, oh, it could be like Katy Perry, like something exciting. But this is like the grief of losing all that youth, but never really having it. I really like that she went into my, like the minors that she went to in the course, because I think like you'd, pr you'd think she'd go like it, it wasn't how you, I thought it was going to go. I really liked those notes. I thought her voice sounded really pretty. I think it complemented well with the tone of the fact that like, just like with the song and just like with her life, it's not the way it was, we expect it to go. It was a missed opportunity to play do, 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 do. at the end. Sweet that there was a home video at the end. Yeah, that That's was lovely. cute. In the beginning, it was reminding me of Us the Duo before it switched to this like powerful ending, which I still like. For her to be compared to us, the duo, that's a big compliment because they're the best. I liked it overall. I, I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the ending, but I liked it. I think lyrically the song is really, really strong. I really liked Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl. I liked Get Him Back as well. Lacey. All American B-I-T-C-H is also fun. I liked Ballad of a Homeschooled Girl, I liked Making the Bed, and I liked Teenage Dream. I feel like I would listen to this entire album all the way through, but I'm not saying it's a no-skip album. Yeah, it's Th not. This is a different... There are some, like Harry's album, that's pretty much a no-skip. This one, like, I'm sure I would skip one or two of these songs, but I would also listen to them all, just to listen to the full album. While Sour, probably no skipper, to be honest. Sour, there are some songs that I don't love, but I won't necessarily skip them. In this album, I think there are some songs that I don't particularly want to listen to again. But I think this is like a good sophomore album. It's definitely an evolution. It's definitely a step forward. You know, a lot of times an album can feel, especially a sophomore album, can just feel like they're trying to repeat the first album. Recreate You're saying it. it's one step forward, not three steps back. That was very logical of you. It's not my favorite album of all time, but I don't think it's a weak album. I think it's a good quality album. She sounds good. There are plenty of good lyrics. There are plenty of good songs. It's not amazing. It's not out of this world, but it's good. And that's that's really impressive for when you, to following up an amazing album to have a good one. I think that's a that's a win for her. I agree with you one hundred percent. Yeah, no, I think it is hard to you know live up to this name that she's claimed for herself. But the fact that she was able to, like you said, it's an evolution of sound. I think this is like truly her sound right now, and you know. I'm excited to see hear the music that is going to be inspired from this album, actually. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. 
Hit that notification bell if you want to be notified every time we post a new video. Also, follow us on Instagram and TikTok for exclusive reactions and behind the scenes content. Make sure to leave a comment down below because we like and read our comments always. Thank you so much for watching. Bye! Bye.